when we were living in Ketchikan, Alaska, um, some people brought in the replica Vietnam Wall. I don't know if any of you have ever seen that, but it's, it's four-fifths the size of the original. It has all the incised letters for the names, so you can do rubbings. And um, they came up on a ferry, and um, there was some problem down in Canada getting it out of the Canadian town to come on up because there was a fishing war going on uh, about borders, you know, which fish was on which side of the border. And uh, did they move? No, they didn't move. Um, but as soon as they heard that the ball was on the boat, everybody said, oh, let it through. So they let it through. And we had it in Ketchikan for a week. Um, it was attended by guys from our um, Coast Guard base and by volunteers from the community. People could do rubbings, bring presents, which were collected afterwards and returned with the wall. Um, and we had people there 24 hours a day to be sure nothing slimy went on. It was just an extraordinary experience. And after the wall left, I wrote a thank you note to the people who had bought it. I think it was the VFW. And then about a month after that, I got a phone call that said, we wanted you to know that the dedication is tonight. And I said, what dedication? They said, the monument. And I said, what monument? You know, that, oh, yeah, yeah. And it turned out that one of the guys had had the poem put in bronze, and it's on a beautiful marble monument in the city park. So if you go up there, you can go see it. It's really beautiful. And I was just knocked out because nobody had told me. This is the poem. After the departure. For days to come, we will see before us the quick shadows of the names. We will see the reflections of our faces and our tears. Our fingers will trace the letters of the names in our dreams. We will think of the names covering the wall, stretching across our small park from end to end, amid the whisper of alders and streams, the hush, the questions, and grief-struck answers. We will think of the names their mothers sang and of the nicknames given in love. We will think of the names repeated and signed, sworn to and saluted, then reported, then listed, then carved. For years to come, the quiet susurrus of our hearts may pause as we remember that we have touched the names, have pressed our lips against the names, have said goodbye again and again, and that because of the names, we will never forget. This is a, a part, another part of the series um, about the Vietnam War. Girls' Night Out in Quang Tri. Naturally, their paper lanterns strung high in the narrow moments between the rains. Early August, and the table on the terrace spread with newspapers and beer splashing into the near clean glasses. We agree there's nothing to complain about. After all, it's not what any of us call home, the splatter of village, this cafe teetering on the edge of the coast road, the volcanic fumes and noise of the supply convoys a little hushed now, a half kilometer away. And we will be going stateside soon, we say, back to real life. But now this is the place for iced bottles, for baguettes, and clams clicking in spicy stews. We want to lay back, get slightly loaded, and never mind that one of us is pressing creases in her fatigues over and over with two fingers, and another is having trouble with words the way they're going into her head, more like colors than ideas, she says, and another is examining her hands, turning them palm to back to palm. We pick and probe, tossing the empty shells to the cats around our ankles. There are moments when we all stop eating, stare into the darkness, listening for the chopper, the one that'll be coming in soon, full of boys who need us again and again, who will need us all night long, our hands soft on their faces, who will need us tomorrow as if the evacuation, the surgery never happened to them, 
or is happening again. On the table, flowers in jars, layers of tissue blossom, and the waitress kicks violently at the huge toms sliding onto the terrace, the sweet slop of juice from our dishes dripping down her apron. She's learning English, wants to go to Chicago, to Miami, wherever there will be no paper lanterns to hang, to take down, to hang again in this damn rain, this war. She wants to be a nurse, like every you, she says. We leave too much tip, twice her wage, and drive back to the base. I am nauseous, my hands slick, sweat evaporating in the night air. Then the glare of spotlights, the flapping rotors, the whip of stiff canvas unfolded, folded, a corpsman hosing down the pad, the sea air blowing into my face, the fragrance of blood and fatigue. Just beyond the perimeter, we can see the lanterns, and above them, the waxing moon, perfect white globes suffused with light. All of us stand quiet, hopeful for a moment in the pure loveliness, then they are gone, the small candles extinguished, the moon behind a cloud, the monsoon sliding in. Um, I wrote this in honor of all the nurses who served in Vietnam and so many other wars. Um, when we were living in New Mexico, the uh, women's memorial was carved um, by Glenna Goodacre, and um, she had a, her studio down south of us in New Mexico, and we were invited with everybody else to the dedication of that monument before it went on a tour of the United States. And so many veterans showed up, and so many nurses who had made it back. It was a huge dance of people hugging, and I found out that in Vietnam, the soldiers said, when you see a nurse, hug her. And that was just repeating itself over and over. It was gorgeous.